thank you for coming to our uh, annual uh, key signing party and cryptography news session. Five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Five seconds. Okay. Um, the uh, our, our usual format is to go over uh, the cryptography news of the year and uh, anything else of interest, and then do the uh, key signing at the end. since we met here last year. Can you set your phasers to stun, please? Yeah. Um, month after our meeting here last year, uh, NIST standardized the uh, SHA-3 algorithm <coughs> as the uh, uh, fourth generation standardized secure hash algorithm. <coughs> um, I can't correctly pronounce Ketchuk, uh, but the winner was Ketchuk. It's a sponge construction. It sucks up bits and then squeezes them out. So it's called a sponge. Um, and the people who know about such things are fairly happy with it. The, uh, you've probably heard news that the NSA finally cracked the sculpt, uh, the CIA cracked the sculpture in their courtyard. The NSA finally announced that, well, we cracked it years before you guys did. a uh, breach announcement for SIM cards. Something like one-eighth of the SIM cards in the world, uh, mostly on cheaper phones, uh, were found to be using single DES, 56-bit encryption for their encryption, uh, which means they provide absolutely no security at all since a modern laptop can break 56 DES um, somewhat slowly by brute force and anything better can do it faster. Um, this is like a total disaster, and those phones require the older SIM cards. This is pathetic. In crypto-free news, a whole bunch of devices have been discovered to have um, hardware-wired uh, firmware uh, Telnet servers with well-known passwords. And there are routers that uh, allow them to be visible to the outside world. It's ridiculous. Uh, tell them that, just say no. There was a paper out at uh, Black Cat or uh, DEF CON entitled The Cryptocalypse, which is generally considered to be um, a tempest in a teapot. Uh, the uh, Yes, there are some new uh, results that are interesting in uh, mathematics that are in related problems to things that we care about in modern cryptography. Um, factoring might be the next step, or a digital logarithm problem might be the next step from here, but the, uh, uh, the, the number fields of which this break uh, breakthrough effect are not the number of fields that we use in cryptography, so it's not a problem yet. Um, if the industry hadn't already been trying to retire 1024 size public keys, this would be a suggestion that it was time to move on. Um, but you know, the uh, SSL or Certificate Authority community has already said that 1024 bit RSA and DSA keys are dead at the end of this year. Uh, certificate authorities aren't supposed to be um, signing keys. A couple of them have, but they aren't supposed to be signing keys uh, with that small a size uh, ending after 12-31-2013. Uh, Randomness is important. You need a good source of random bits in order to do much of any cryptography. Yet another developer has written their own randomness, and it's failed badly. 
So the, uh, if you're using the CryptoCat product, the person-to-person uh, -person is safe, but the multi-way um, implementation uh, was just a total failure. Other people implementing the same multi-person protocol did it fine. They just had a really bad randomness. Uh, last year there was a, a breach whose acronym was CRIME that used um, uh, hooks in the protocols that the crypto is built into in order to use the recipient as an oracle as they diddled the padding um, to uh, get the other end to tell them if they were guessing right. The, uh, this has been extended to a different use case and the new acronym is BREACH. These guys are having fun with their um, acronyms. Um, the Basically, if, if, you're, if you're a security officer for a system that's using HTTPS or SSL, you shouldn't be hearing about this here, so I'm not going to go into what the um, defenses are. But uh, if your organization is uh, using SSL to protect anything important, uh, you better have somebody that's on top of this. Um, RC4 is still broken and there's a new attack uh, that breaks it even worse. So uh, using that for a lot of, there are a few things it's still usable for, but uh, not much. SSL isn't one of them. There was another uh, fake scandal floating around the internet uh, over the summer. Uh, somebody published a paper saying that all the cryptographers were doing entropy wrong. Um, and Bruce Schneier, one of the better encryption minds on the internet, looked at it and said, well, first of all, uh, most of the time, the definition that a lot of people have been using is good enough, and a lot of the top crypto papers are using the uh, uh, other version of entropy anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's, there's no danger here. Uh, so the, the uh, press releases from the university PR office that said all cryptography was uh, mistaken were uh, just that PR. Cryptography's actually been in the news, you know, the, the general evening news lately, um, the 800 pound gorilla elephant in the room, um, the Brits grabbed somebody who was carrying hard drives, um, people have been releasing things to the news media. Um, everybody's tapping everything, everybody's breaking everything, so it says in the news. Um, it's, uh, it's not as bad as it sounds. Um, anything you've heard this summer, why, uh, if you're surprised, why are you surprised? We pay them to steal people's secrets. <laughs> um, and they have a budget. We pay them to steal other people's secrets, not our secrets. Well, but we pay them to steal other people's secrets, and it's pretty hard for them to know which things are the other guy's secrets until they've at least seen the to and from on the message to know if it's going to somebody well, who isn't a citizen, who's outside the country, or who's on a watch list. So that. Charge is getting wider. Well, yes. Broader and broader. Absolutely. But, you know, given what we've asked them to do for the country. Didn't we ask them to obey the Constitution? Uh, it's like an interpretation of the Constitution. And, and, exactly and, the and this is why there's the uh, Foreign Intelligence uh, Surveillance Court to help them interpret the Constitution the way they want. Um, and it's uh, a bit of a lapdog. Uh, although. But if, if they look at every header to find just the ones that they're allowed to have, <coughs> um, that's, I think, what the taxpayers who aren't worried uh, expect them to be doing. 
Well, the headers are not so worried about, but I mean, and also, but they're doing way more than that. I mean, you know, they have the, had a, I don't know what, EXA, but EXA uh, Fight Data Center in Utah. And, uh, but I mean, the other thing was that, on the good news though, FISA, there's actually a judge who, a FISA judge who actually said, eh, no, we're not. And, and the, 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 the FISA court has, in at least one occasion, told them that uh, they were wrong and told them to change. Um, but, uh, you know, the, uh, you know the, the really bad news is it's not just our guys. Right. Well, sure. um, there, there are multiple uh, setups uh, in China and probably elsewhere um, that are watching everybody else also, um, and they're not uh, bound to our constitution to uh, uh, not read messages that are between citizens within the continental U.S. You know, the good news for our spooks is a large number of internet connections that span the planet have to land here before heading out again. And it's uh, hard for somebody who isn't a uh, top tier boundary gateway uh, protocol administrator uh, to make sure that their packets don't take a shortcut through the USA to get from one foreign country to another. Uh, so that there's uh, lots of juicy stuff in San Francisco, in New York, and anywhere else uh, cables land uh, for people who are only looking at foreign traffic to look at. But they have to look at whatever's flowing through there in order to find the stuff they're supposed to look at. You know, just at, at the level of uh, looking at the envelopes as they go by in the post office. Um, but uh, the, uh, I don't know if anyone else here looked at the Mandian APT1 report when it came out this last year. Um, that's a report from a um, security services vendor uh, who's been watching the Canadian, I'm not, not Canadian, I'm sorry, the uh, Chinese watching us and have profiled um, the team in this one particular Shanghai office of the uh, Chinese military. I'm not sure if these are the same people that Semantic profiled this um, last week or two or if it's a different bunch. Um, but uh, this uh, Shanghai military operation uh, has been doing largely industrial espionage on behalf of the uh, party and military owned uh, companies, uh, but is also uh, capable of um, military work, and there are a bunch of other uh, such operations. We also know from um, Wall Street Journal that uh, um, private operations um, in the uh, former Soviet Union territory uh, are uh, interested in our uh, Fedwire uh, and other uh, financial settlement systems, because as Willie Sutton claims he never said, uh, that's where the money is. And, and they they have diverted some uh, you know, some seven figure payments on occasion. People don't talk about it much. Um, until a couple weeks ago, uh, that was one of my worries. Um, my connection to the Fedwire system. Because that's not settlement in three days, that's settlement now. Cash. That's a lot like money. The, um, so, um, some of the best minds in the industry uh, who are uh, not beholden to the U.S. government um, have uh, agreed with what some of the leakers have said. The math is good. It's the implementations that are flawed in general. Uh, but I did notice that Bruce Schneier, uh, when he was brought in to assist the Guardian, uh, used the revoke certificate on his 2,000-bit key and published the 4,000-bit key. 
the needs. But the, the biggest threat to our uh, RSA, DSA, and elliptic curve algorithms today is bad randomness or bad protocols that um, abuse the math and, and betray the math. It's not the math. But the 1024 bit is just getting a little too small for how fast our computers are. Um, you may not have a, a five year life on that. And the, uh, the industry has decided that uh, we, we shouldn't be using it after uh, the end of this year. So. Other problems, you know, flawed users. Um, you know, don't publish your private key. <laughs> um, random number generators that are used to generate keys automatically or are used to generate the nonces and uh, initialization vectors for protocol. Uh, if, if they're flawed, um, return seven is a very useful random number generator for test suites. It is not useful in cryptography. Um, a subtly biased random number generator used for cryptography is about as good as return seven. Are you going to lose any keys? The idea that you got like a relocation key or a front and store somewhere safe? Yeah. Um, if, if anyone checks to see if your key is revoked. Uh, if, if, if the person um, being receiving a fake message allegedly signed by you, signed by somebody that broke the key that you, or stole the key that you've revoked, doesn't think to check the revoke server, <laughs> the revoke server doesn't do you any good. So the revoke server is oh, shallow comfort. Shouldn't that be easily fixable by making sure all the software people commonly use automatically checks that every time you try to use it? No, the problem there then is you have a denial of service swap. Right. I mean, even we're going to do some ending best practice. I mean, I know I have on all my machines a cron job that runs every week. GVG dash dash refresh dash keys. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I have the same thing. That That's good. Um, but the, uh, you, uh, that's a good best practice uh, to re refresh regularly. Um, that uh, doesn't protect you from somebody sending you a easily verified against a, a public place uh, that uh, you know. It, it, there are keys out there that could be. Um, Verified by something other than a key server. I was actually thinking more in terms of someone, uh, 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 is the, uh, the thing to yeah. do Yeah, exactly. So, um, and of course, you know, the, the protocols are software. And software has bugs. And people. People, too. Um, pe people are frequently abusable. Um, social engineering is, you know, the the biggest hole in the world. Um, but your flawed software packages, even beyond the randomness, if there's a typical Java bug that you can stuff a megabyte into a buffer with uh, and overflow something in your Java or your C++, um, you know, we, we stick some bad stuff in a packet and we've just defeated your encryption because we defeated your operating system. You know, if, if you download malware, unbeknownst to you, the malware can get your encrypted messages before or after they're encrypted or unencrypted, um, and then send it back out to the internet. And all the encryption has done you no good at all. Physical security at the end of the day, too. Yeah. Um, so the, um, you know, there are, you know, there are groups working for the government that are looking for bugs in the system uh, that they can use to uh, monitor the people they need to monitor, uh, looking for defective protocols. Um, 
you know, if it's defective, they're not going to tell anybody. They're just going to note it for future use. The rootkits.com compromise where, uh, what's his face, that he had a whole bunch of back pocket ones he wanted to sell. <coughs> yep. And uh, the, um, they want to get a hold of ones that nobody else knows about um, because they don't, you know, it doesn't do them any good until uh, they can use it against uh, somebody they really, really care about, which probably means a, you know, the president of Brazil. Um, and, you know, boy, is she annoyed. The, uh, there's been discussions lately of um, backdoor as much uh, speculation. We don't really know anything, uh, aside from the AT&T switching room um, in San Francisco is, is old news. Um, people talk about expecting the NSA to stop back doors in our crypto algorithms. We now know it's been declassified that NSA strengthened DES's internal uh, constants. Uh, because they knew about a, a cryptanalysis technique that uh, wasn't in the open literature yet. Uh, when IBM um, independently discovered this technique, they noticed that the government had fixed DES for them to protect against that. Interesting. They knew about it before we did. Mm. And they kept their mouth shut. When academic cryptographers discovered differential cryptanalysis, um, they noticed that DES was protected against it and were surprised that DES was old and decrepit and crap by then. Um, and the question was asked, why is this good against it? And IBM said, well, we knew about it already. Except they didn't know about it when they were writing Lucifer. Um, the uh, and NSA fixed the S boxes to make it safe. Of course, they're also the ones that made it 56 bits instead of 64 bits by saying, we really need 8 bits of parity embedded in the key, not on the band. Yeah, maybe. Um, that might have been there to protect um, their systems from um, corrupting themselves by auto, in auto key mode. And it might have been there to make sure that the uh, key was small enough that a, a billion dollar system could uh, brute force it. You know, we'll never know. You know, it'll be another 30 years before that's declassified. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the uh, public story on that anyway was that there were limits on um, key, on uh, strength of cryptography that would be exported, and they wanted uh, MDS was intended to be exportable. Oh, well, they were saying that 40 was the limit on exports, so, um, uh, so that, doesn't quite that doesn't quite wash either. There, there, are, there are a lot of public stories that don't quite wash there, so we, we don't know. The other thing that I heard, um, do my prep for last week was uh, they said it was just as good. But, uh, it, it, was, it was like 40, 46 was just as good as 64, and so it was a compromise between NSA and IBM to go 56. This is this is and that's what they said. Yes, and and from no. the point of, and from the point of view of the year they were making the decision, <coughs> basically nobody but them could afford the brute forcing on any of those sizes. Right. But sizing it to where they could afford to and nobody else could uh, was a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and as a taxpayer, I would like the system they have to buy to not be too expensive. Thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, the, uh, the dual elliptic curve hash that has been in the news lately. Um, it's unclear exactly what went on there. Uh, the details are sketchy, but in reality, the algorithm is so terrible in performance that nobody actually uses it. Anybody that has it implemented has it as the lowest priority. So the only way a connection would ever be created with that selected is if the person you're talking to wants it to be selected. Well, if you're talking to the NSA, they're going to get a copy of the traffic anyway. 
I don't care. Um, so they're, and the NIST has reopened the standard and has dropped that recommendation from it. Uh, there are uh, rumors that uh, when DigiNotar was hacked, um, various entities uh, got uh, certificate authority keys signed with the broken uh, DigiNotar key. Um, the conspiracy theory people will tell you who got them. Uh, Nobody else knows in the unclassified world aside from the conspiracy people. Uh, the conspiracy people will tell you whatever you want to hear. So, can't take that seriously, but uh, there's been, uh, there apparently have been some cases where uh, a, a man in the middle uh, certificate signed by something that looked right uh, has let somebody peel traffic. Now, a lot of cases, that somebody is your own company who's stuffed an extra certificate into your browser when they put the browser on your desktop. Um, but uh, with, with the, there are too many uh, root CA keys in our browser today or in our operating system uh, to be certain that uh, no sub-authority key that was signed by one of those has uh, never signed a sub-authority key that escaped from the parent agency. Um, <laughs> just too many of them. It, it, it's out of control. So are, are there going to be keys signed saying that they're Google by somebody that your browser trusts that uh, you don't think is Google? Uh, yeah. Uh, some, of those, uh, some of those keys are at Akamai. Akamai convinces your browser they're Google all the time. Um, there are, you know, what else is there out there? We don't know. Um, so, you know, SSL, HTTPS, CA system, <coughs> It's better than nothing, and it's all we've got. But uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's not a hundred percent. If if you need a hundred percent absolute certainty, that that's not where it's at. Yeah. Um, DES. Uh, used to be brute forcible only at a major nation state level of budget. Um, you know, now you can do it with home hardware. Uh, password cracking used to take a, uh, a decent cluster. Now you can do it with a, uh, a computer with a couple of graphics adapters or slowly with a laptop. Um, RSA 1024 is generally considered to be out of reach for uh, internet um, uh, screen, screen saver computing uh, for a little while longer, but it's in play for being um, major national labs breakable, uh, which is why it's being uh, decertified by the certificate authorities uh, coordinating here, the CAB, uh, as of uh, 1231, 2013, as I mentioned. So. Now, you, you, earlier you mentioned the 2048. 2048 is what the, the industry is moving to. Yeah. Oh. But earlier, you, earlier <clears throat> when you were talking, you mentioned 2048. My, 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 yeah. fir my, my first email said we should be doing 2048. Yeah. Uh, my second email uh, said that uh, Bruce dumped his 2048 and moved to 4096. Yeah. Uh, so if you're really paranoid, that's what you should be doing. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just referring to your comment. In the, in the, hmm? You made this statement in the pre-meeting that the 2048 key was being dropped as of uh, 1231. No, as of 1231, it's 2048 is required, 1024 is dropped. Okay. Bruce dropped his 2048 yeah. because uh, yeah. he, 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 needs, no, he, he, he probably needs statute of limitation protection for what he's doing right. for the Guardian. 
Yeah. So he, he needs a 30-year key, not a five-year key. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you had mentioned uh, the 2048 key earlier. I, I did, but that was with regard to Bruce dropping his, not the industry. No, I think you made a mistake. That's all. Well, that's possible. Yeah. Uh, but the, the industry is moving from 1024 to 2048. Yeah, which is at, at the end good. At the end of the year, Google's already made the switch. Mm -hmm. uh, the certificate authorities are supposed to, according to CAB, be no longer signing 1024s unless they have an expiration date within this year. Since your keys probably have a five-year expiration date, they should be 2048 or better. And the list we have for tonight is mostly compliant. Is there a preference uh, as which better, RSA or DSA? Not really. Um, they're pretty much equivalent in terms of brute forcing. They're um, slightly different in the mathematics. Uh, in terms of the recent breakthroughs um, in pure mathematics um, that threaten um, future breakthroughs, they're equally susceptible. There's a sense in which DSA is more susceptible, but you know, if you, digital logarithms and factoring are kind of related in the underground math. Um, and I forget one of them. If you can do one of them, you can do both, but not vice versa. But a breakthrough in the mathematics could affect both of them easily. Um, the, um, uh, a little bit worrying is the uh, new mathematics uh, in the digital logarithm area. Uh, I'm sorry, discrete logarithm area. Uh, it's all digital. Right? Uh, and discrete logarithms uh, might actually have implications in elliptic curves as well, although probably not as immediately. And the bad news is. Um, PGP doesn't even support elliptic curves yet, possibly due to patent issues. Um, and so having, having a good pluggable replacement, uh, we're probably years away from having uh, a winner in the emerging algorithms as if we need something besides RSA, DSA, and elliptic curves, uh, things that are in weirder math that is away from the discrete log and factoring problems, which are sort of um, all three of those have a uh, core similarity, even though elliptical curves are weird. Um, it, it's still a similar group structure in mathematics um, at, at some level. Uh, the, uh, weirder matrix field maths uh, that are needed to get away from where uh, Zhu's uh, new theorems uh, indicate there may be problems in the next 5 to 15 years. It's hard to predict mathematical breakthroughs. It took a long time to beat Fermat. <laughs> it took a long time. Um, people thought it was around the corner for a century. Um, the uh, None of them are very attractive, um, but the good news is computers are getting faster such that uh, that messy, messy stuff is actually getting more doable. Uh, so there are mathematical theories that will support public key cryptography aside from the three we're using today. Um, they're not ready for mainstream use and, you know, the new privacy card, GPG, hasn't even gotten on board with the elliptic curve yet. So, you know, the distributions I, I was using when I was setting up for my new key, none of, they aren't even doing idea yet. And that patent expired a year ago. Uh, <laughs> no, I am. I'm using, I, I have, it did expire a year ago. I mean, you, you can find the pieces, but the, the standard oh, no. distributions. Yeah. I, I have, on my Mac, I have a Mac running whatever the newest version of OS X is with GPG on it. and idea when I did um, uh, GPG-V or dash dash version ideas on that. So I, I think if you upgrade upgrade GPG, um, you should, because I'm using your well, privacy card. I used the latest off of Debian, uh, Debian and the latest one off of FreeBSD and neither one of them had ideas. Well, I, I had to go to the, up the Well, you, you might have to go to Debian Unstable to get right. the latest upstream release. Debian's pretty slow and I don't know how, how fast FreeBSD is, but yeah. Let me check uh, Fedora. 
GPG dash 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 version. Oh, okay. I think yeah. I think if you do dash dash version, it'll spit out your uh, symmetric asymmetric and um, hash compression. So what I just checked in. The, the key signing we're doing tonight is uh, extending the PGP web of trust. Instead of having a root CA. Um, we verify the identities of actual people here in Meet Space uh, and verify their key information and then we transfer that trust online by doing an offline key of signing and uploading. The, uh, so the, the web of trust is a combination of, the, uh, of hierarchical trust and direct trust. Tonight we're establishing links in that chain. So that instead of having designated certificate authorities, of which I just mentioned, there are too many of within our browsers, within the PGP world, we all act as certifying authorities <coughs> for each other. But we're not certifying total trust. A good reason for that. Nobody would trust yeah. us Fedora has it. to do total trust. Yeah, just um, we're just certifying that, yeah, I met this guy, and that's his case. And if you know me, or if you know some of us, then uh, you may trust me to provide effectively a remote introduction to this person. Um, and PGP you know, has a level of trust uh, that you can set. Um, I wouldn't bother um, signing a key with a no trust setting, why bother? Um, and you might not even want to bother with it at marginal level. Um, so obviously, to do a signing, you need your own key. This is a circular firing squad. We're going to promise each other to sign each other's keys when we uh, verify each other's information. Um, you can and should. Um, on your own system, make a revocation uh, certificate that will allow you to cancel your key if you ever think your key is compromised or if you think it's um, prematurely should expire because it's too small um, and there's been a you know, jump in the state of the art. You know, if you made a 1024 previously, you might make a revoke for it and publish it because you now think it's too small. If the 2048 key you're doing tonight shouldn't last five years, maybe you'll revoke it in a couple of years when you publish your 4096. Can you, what, so what's the difference now between revoking it early and pulling back the expiration date? Hmm. Republishing it with a new expiration date uh, might be adequate. Uh, Sounds like it's semantically different. Right, right, that's right, exactly. It's semantically different. Yeah. There's a reason code in the revoke certificate, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So you can certificate. say, yes, I believe this was stolen or whatever. Oh, no, no, that, that I know, but I'm more just saying, you know, so rather than waiting three years, yeah. you know, so now say, you know, I generate a 2048. Yeah. Yeah, pre early expiring is gentler. Yeah. You can unexpire a key. That one I know, that I know. Um, are there any good reasons for not using 40 uh, lines of No. Um, slow hardware.